Ringside Boys, welcome to the side of the ring, because it's time for some Ringside Rumors. I don't know if I'm ever going to get any higher with that, and I don't want to, to be honest. During a discussion on Wrestling Observer Radio about Ariel Hawani's frustrating interview with Tony Khan, oh boy, <laughs> Dave Meltzer, oh, that's it, he talked about me. No, he didn't. Dave Meltzer expressed his own frustrations about AEW being secretive with the media and the public. Meltzer finds the company's official silence on anything and anyone associated with the post all brawl to be unprofessional and unfair to AEW fans. He's right. He's right. He's 100% right. He's right. He's correct. He's absolutely right. I don't understand why Tony Khan isn't saying anything. That doesn't make any sense. You being quiet about it is not helping. It's not. The least you could do is give some type of answer in some sort of capacity, and you're not doing that. So the fact that you're being quiet and you're not even remotely touching it on any angle, on any surface, with any type of apparatus of any kind, it comes off as you just... Just it's not helping. It's not helping your case. It's not helping your case. Yes, there is a legal situation. Yes, there has to be some sort of legal thing going on that is stopping him from doing it. But he's pulling a me. He's so worried. He is so worried. It is lit. It is debilitating him of how worried he is of what is going to happen if he says something. Because he's already, he's already, the AEW itself, let me tell, let me talk to you. AEW, already as it is, is slipping through his fingers. Not by a large margin, but you can tell that he does not have a full 100% grasp on this, on this, 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 this company, right? Imagine if you went to a prison and you went up to the warden and the, and you said, hey, we're getting a lot of reports in the news that the, the inmates are running the asylum. And the warden looks at you and goes, no, no, no. Everything's totally fine. There's nothing wrong. Yeah, we've got a, a few hiccups, but it's nothing we can't handle. And you, all you have to do, right, all you have to do is lean over and look past his shoulder. And you will see people running around. There's shit on the wall. There's fire. I'm not saying that that is what's happening, right? But it's a very loose representation of what is going on. And then you look back at him, and he's got that dumb look on his face like he's cheesing at you. Like, okay, thank you, but you leave now. It's not looking good for AEW right now, and this is not helping. You've got, you've got fights taking backstage. You've got drama all over the place, right? There's so many different facets of your roster that you are not utilizing properly. You have way too many shows. You're stretching yourself way too thin with too many things. And now you're about to be an executive producer for a docu-series on top of the shit that you already are having trouble dealing with in the first place. And then when people come up to you and they go, hey man, what is going on? It is. It doesn't look like... <laughs> I'm seeing a lot of like smoke come from the window. Is everything okay up there? Is everything all right? You haven't left your house in weeks. There's smoke coming from your window. Um, I'm seeing a, a bunch of people in suits knock on your door and then leave shit taped to your window and your door and all that. What is going on? And you're going, oh, everything's fine. Don't even worry about it. And you close the door. This is not, this is not a good look for you at all, Tony. All right. This isn't a good look for you. It's not. It's such a bad look <laughs> that I went onto the internet and I said, "Hey, everyone, leave Tony Khan alone." Okay, there's got to be a reason for why he's doing it. And everyone went, "No, no, 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 no. Tony Khan is being a doofus." And then I was like, "Oh shit, yeah, you're right. Tony Khan is being a doofus." I don't. I don't know when this is going to. The only okay. Once it comes out, what is actually happening? Once it comes out, that is when Tony Khan. Tony Khan is going to fucking explode. He is going to lose his mind in a good way. Once that whole, once the whole legal situation finally, because um, they didn't wish Kenny Omega a happy birthday. I think I already talked about that. And then uh, Tony Kenny Omega couldn't um, send out a uh, a video message at AAA because of the whole legal situation that was going on. They are literally living under a rock right now because they have to legally. And a lot of people, a lot of people are coming up out of the woodwork and saying, well, why don't you just say that? Tell them that then. Specify it. It didn't help that as soon as this all happened, he went on to the AEW and said, hey, I'm stripping them of the titles. I'm not going to tell you why. I'm just stripping them of the titles. This isn't a good look for him. Next, at a minimum, Meltzer thinks AEW should, quote, just say, we have a legal situation. We can't discuss it. And 
And until it's resolved, CM Punk, Kenny Omega, and the Young Bucks aren't going to be back. That's fine, because as far as I know, that's what it is. Well, now, now everybody pretty much knows that that's what it is. If you're sticking to the dirt sheets and you're staying up on the news, at this point, it's pretty easy to tell um, he's not saying anything because of legal situations. But Dave has a point in kayfabe sense of like, hey, if there are people out there that don't read the news, that don't stay up to date on the stuff, that don't have time or whatever, so they don't know. And if you don't tell them, they're going to have to do, they have no choice but to speculate off of other things that are happening. And what if somebody doesn't tell them? What if they, what if they have no idea? What if they don't read the news? What if they don't even care to read the news? What if they are a just basic casual fan and they don't have any friends? They're a wrestling fan, so of course they don't have friends. What if they don't have any friends to tell them what is actually going on? How are they going to know? How are they going to know anything? You haven't told anyone anything at all ever about anything that is going on. Next, meanwhile, Conan said "Keep." Conan said on Keeping It 100, he asked Omega for a video they could use at Triple Mania, tri Triple Mania, Triple X, uh, Chapter 3 with the Hio del Vikingo, Vikingo? Vikingo? I think it's Vikingo slash Ray Phoenix title match since Kenny is still involved in the mega championship scene. Omega told him he still couldn't because of legal issues. Right. Which is only dampening Kenny and it's dampening the Young Bucks and it's dampening CM Punk and it's dampening Ace Steel. And from what I've heard, it doesn't sound like either of them are fired. So I don't know, I don't know what is going on. Next, while covering Triple H missing Raw to do... Oh, yeah, uh, for those of you who don't know, Triple H got COVID-19. So, while covering Triple H missing Raw to do a, due to a positive COVID test, multiple sites reported that Road Dog ran the show and that Bruce Pritchard had a previously planned night off. Good, get him out of there. Don't plan anything. Don't do anything. Stay away from it. Next, XG4 employees told the Washington Post that a crew from Arena, the Xavier Woods hosted show the network produced with WWE. Oh, okay. XG4 employees told the Washington Post that crew from the show Arena, the Xavier Woods hosted show that the network produced with WWE, quit last week before the channel was shut down. The Post story called Arena part of a crucial deal with the WWE. The Xavier Woods hosted show produced with WWE quit last week. XG4 employees told that the crew from the arena quit. Huh. Why? Before the channel was shut down. Why? Why was the channel shut down? Creed 4 G4 was a success. As you know, G4 was reintroduced last year to tap into the popularity of gaming. We invested to create the new G4 as an online and TV destination for fans to be entertained, be inspired, and connect with gaming content over the past several months, we worked hard to generate that interest in G4, but viewership is low and the network has not achieved sustainable financial results. This is certainly not what we hoped for. And as a result, we have made the very <clears throat> difficult decision to discontinue G4's operations effective immediately. Oh, that actually kind of sucks. Like genuinely, it really fucking does. That actually sucks. I'm really sad to hear that because I know um, Xavier Woods, Austin Creed, he was actually like, he's really into games. And he's really into integrating video games into wrestling. Wow, that actually, that really fucking stinks. I don't even know what else to say about that. I'm really sad to hear that about G4. Oh, yeah, yeah, man. I, I don't even know what else to say because it's like, oh, well, hopefully they get picked up. Well, if their numbers aren't doing well, then I really don't think that anyone's going to want to pick them up, you know? I don't know. Finally, according to Fightful Select, AEW talent and staff were informed at a uh, behind-the-scenes documentary series will be filmed during the six weeks leading up to December 14th's Winter is Coming edition of Dynamite. The show is probably an example of the outside of the ring program a Warner Brothers Discovery exec recently said they were partnering with AEW on. So I talked about this in the turnbuckle earlier today, which is probably going to go up late. I'm just going to say that now. Um. Oh, by the oh, I didn't even talk about that. By the way, it's not the season finale. It's not. Um, I'm going to do that next week. Not this week. It's going to be next week. I definitely should have. I'm going to, oh, don't worry. I'll let everyone know. Um, yeah. So they're doing the docuseries. It's going to start on November 3rd, right? No, 4th, November 4th. It's going to start November. It's going to be six weeks. It said it was going to focus on core people, the core, like, uh, 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 wrestlers. And then it's going to focus on the people chasing a title or re retaining one. I mean, listen, I, what I really think is happening is I think that they're just doing this for now and then they're going to see what happens with this. 
And then if this gets greenlit, no, it already got greenlit. If this gets, if this pulls in good numbers, then they're going to be like, all right, we're going to continue on with it. But I, I don't know. We're really going to have to wait and see. I genuinely don't know. That G4 thing genuinely surprised me. It, it genuinely did. But listen, man, okay, I, I mean, I didn't watch it, right? So what does that tell you, you know? So, I mean, really, we're, we're really going to have to wait and see what, uh, what they do with it. So only time will tell. I can't really say a whole lot. What do we talk about? Uh, all right. Tony Khan is not helping himself by not saying anything. And uh, the least Tony Khan should do is say, hey, we have a legal situation and we can't discuss it. He should have done that. If he had have done that from the start, no one would be talking about this. No one. But then again, if he didn't say that from the start, I wouldn't have gotten 550 views on that video. Shouts out to everybody who watched that, okay? You're a gem and I love you, all right? You get forehead kisses, all right? I bless you. I bless you every night, okay? So maybe he shouldn't have said anything because that wouldn't have started that, okay? It's like the it's like the uh, mosquito effect. You kill a mosquito and then, you know, Hitler never exists or something. So I don't know. I mean, is that a good thing? I actually don't know. Um, uh, uh, uh. What's his name? Kenny Omega, jeez Louise. Kenny Omega couldn't send out a video message at Triple Mania Triple X Chapter 3 because he was still in legal trouble, which isn't good, which, uh, like I said, doesn't do anything for Kenny Omega or the Young Bucks or Ace Steel or CM Punk, and there's, the CM Punk is still not fired, and I know that's rubbing people the wrong way. Uh, Triple H got COVID-19, but Road Dog was the one who ran the show, and Bruce Pritchard had the night off, so that's good to know. Uh, XG4 employees told the Washington Post that they quit because the channel was shut down. I'm really sad to hear that, man. I really am. I think, uh, okay, I don't know. I genuinely don't know. I just, I don't want, I don't want Xavier to be upset because he still has up, up, down, down, you know? So at the end of the day, at least he has some type of gaming capacity to fall back on, you know? So silver linings, silver linings. And according to Fightful Select, uh, there's a docu-series that's going to start up about AEW talent. And I don't know how it's going to be. And I, considering the fact that it's only going to be six weeks, we're going to have to wait and see what that docu-series is going to be like. Folks. That's going to do it for this episode. I really hope you guys enjoyed this episode because I certainly enjoyed making it out. Definitely catch you guys in the next one.